Many courses have areas of tall grass or fescue like this off the fairways, where a ball can become lost pretty easily. One of the fundamental principles of the game of golf is playing the ball as it lies. But in order to do that, you have to find the ball first. You have three minutes to find and identify your ball once you or your caddy start searching for it. And anybody who's out on the course, whether it's people you're playing with or happen to be watching, can help you find the ball. And while you're searching, you can take reasonable actions to find the ball, like moving or bending any of the grass. And if the ball were to accidentally move while you're searching for it, there's no penalty and you just replace the ball on its original spot. Now, if you don't find the ball within those three minutes, well, at that point, you have to take stroke and distance relief for one penalty stroke. So in this case, I'd be heading back to the tee. Whether you're playing in a USGA championship or a Saturday morning at home, embedded ball relief is one of those rules that always seems to come up. So it's a good one to make sure you understand. The first piece to understand is when a ball's embedded. A ball's embedded when it's below the surface of the ground and in its own pitch mark. You can take relief for an embedded ball anywhere in the general area. So that includes both the rough and the fairway. And the ball needs to be in its own pitch mark from the previous stroke. So that means if the ball were to roll into someone else's pitch mark, you wouldn't be able to take the free relief. But as long as it's reasonable to conclude that it was your pitch mark, you can go ahead and take the free relief. To do so, you'll measure a one club length relief area from the spot right behind where the ball was embedded, no closer to the hole, and then you can drop either the original ball or another one. For those of you that play golf, I'm sure you've hit that perfect shot only to have the ball stop on the edge of the hole. Here's what you need to know about the rules next time the ball's overhanging the hole. The rule's gonna give you a reasonable amount of time to reach the hole. Now what's reasonable could be different in each situation. If you played from back in the fairway, it would likely take you longer to reach the hole than if you just played from on the putting green. Now once you've had that reasonable time to reach the hole, that's when those 10 seconds start. Now, if the ball falls into the hole within those 10 seconds, well, the ball's hold with the previous stroke. If the ball doesn't fall into the hole within that time, then we have a couple different outcomes that could happen. The first is, you just go ahead and play the ball as it lies. Now, if the ball falls into the hole before you're able to play it as it lies, the ball's hold with that previous stroke, but you do add a one-stroke penalty, which effectively gets you to the same outcome as if you had played the ball as it lies. obstructions are all over golf courses. They're those artificial objects that can be moved quickly and easily. Things like benches, ball washers, trash cans, golf carts, even seats brought in by fans. Now what would happen if a ball were to come to rest on one of these obstructions? Like we see here. Well the rules give the player free relief in this case. To take that free relief, the player needs to estimate the spot right under where the ball came to rest on the obstruction. The obstruction can be moved out of the way by anyone, and then the player has a one club length relief area to drop within, no closer to the hole, and it's limited to the same area of the course. So here, we need to stay in the general area. For more great rules content, download the USGA Rules of Golf app or visit usga.org slash rules.